Welcome back to Deep Learning and today we want to discuss a couple of other reinforcement learning approaches than the policy iteration concept that you've seen in the previous video. Let's have a look at what I've got for you today. So we have other solution methods. You see that in the policy and value iteration that we discussed earlier, they require updated policies during the learning to obtain better approximations of our optimal state value function. So these are called on policy algorithms because you need a policy and this policy is being updated. Additionally, we assume that the state transition and the reward are known. So the probability density functions that produce the new states and the new reward are known. If they are not, then you can't apply the previous concept. So this is very important. And of course, there are methods where you can then relax this. So these methods mostly differ on how they perform the policy evaluation. So let's look at a couple of those alternatives. The first one that I want to show you is based on Monte Carlo techniques. This applies only for episodic tasks. And here the idea is an off-policy method. So you learn the optimal state value by following an arbitrary policy. Doesn't matter what policy you're using, so it's an arbitrary policy, it could be multiple policies. Of course, you still have the exploration exploitation dilemma, so you want to choose policies that really visit all of the states. But you don't need information about the dynamics of the environment because you can simply sample. So you can run many of the episodic tasks and you try to reach all of the possible states. If you do so, then you can generate those episodes using some policy and then you loop backwards over one episode and you accumulate the expected future reward because you have played the game until the end then you can go backwards over this episode and accumulate the different rewards that have been obtained and if a state was not yet visited you append it to a list and essentially you use this list then to compute the update for this state value function so you see this is simply the sum over these lists for that specific state and this will allow you to update your state value and this way you can then iterate in order to achieve the optimal state value function. Now another concept is temporal difference learning. This is an on policy method but again it does not need information about the dynamics of the environment. So here the scheme is that you loop and follow a certain policy, then you use an action from the policy to observe the rewards and the new states, and then you update your state value function using the previous state value function, some alpha that is used uh, to weigh the influence of the new observations, the new reward, the discounted version of the old state value function of the new state and you subtract the value of the old state. So this way you can generate updates and this actually converges to the optimal solution and a variant of this estimates actually the action function and this is then known as SARSA. There's also Q-learning. Q-learning is an off-policy method. It's a temporal difference type of method but it does not require information about the dynamics of the environment. And here the idea is that you loop and follow a policy derived from your action value function, for example, with an epsilon greedy type of approach. Then you use the action from the policy to observe your reward and your new state. And then you update your action value function using the previous action value function plus some uh, weighting factor times the observed reward, then again 
discounted the action that would have derived the maximum action value over what you have already known from the state that is generated minus the action value function of the previous state. So it's again a kind of temporal difference that you are using here in order to update your action value function. Well, if you have universal function approximators, what about just parameterizing your policy with some weights w and some loss function? And this is then known as policy gradient and the instance is called reinforce. So you generate an episode using your policy and your weights. Then you go forwards in your episode from time 0 to time t minus 1. And if you do so, you can actually compute the gradient with respect to the weights. And you use this gradient in order to update your weights. Very similar way as we have previously seen in our learning approaches. And you can see that this idea using the gradient over the policy then gives you an idea how you can update the weights again with a learning rate and we are really close to our machine learning ideas from earlier. And this is why we talk in the next video about deep Q learning, which is the kind of deep learning version of reinforcement learning. So I hope you like this video. You've now seen other options how you can actually determine the optimal state value function. And this way we have seen that there are many different ideas that do no longer require exact knowledge on how to generate the future states and how to generate the future rewards. So with these ideas you can also do reinforcement learning and in particular the idea of the policy gradient we seen that this is very much compatible to what we've seen earlier in this class regarding our machine learning and deep learning methods. And we will talk about exactly this idea in the next video. So thank you very much for listening and see you in the next video. Bye bye.